Joe's Beautiful Sunset. Giovanna Vernuccio was the first Italian focolarina sent by Chiara Lubic in 1966, together with Guido or Cenja Mirti, and three other companions to begin the adventure of unity in the Philippines and later in other countries of Asia and Oceania. Jo, as she is known to many, left this earthly abode last March 31st, 2022. Here is an excerpt from her profile that was read during her funeral. Jo was born in the city of Florence, Italy on December 20th, 1931. She had a beautiful childhood and described herself as a lively, adventure-loving, and somewhat mischievous kind of girl. With the breaking out of the Second World War, life in the city became difficult. People were going hungry, and the experience of pain made her feel like a prisoner of the world she was born into. It seemed to her that even God was not so present in her life that he was not interested in her. Jo wrote on September 25, 1943, Bombs fell on Florence for the first time. We didn't even have time to go down to the cellar, used as an air raid shelter, when the bombs were already falling, very close to us, who were living next to an important railway junction, Campo di Marte. I was quite frightened and prayed one Hail Mary after another. My father came home running. He told us that had he found us dead, he would have volunteered to go to the front lines to avenge us. I was struck by the fact that war could make a peaceful man ready to kill. I began to understand a little more. Then at war's end, despite difficult family problems, Joe started to go to the parish again. Attracted by some young people of the Catholic action who were working with great commitment and enthusiasm, also on a political level. In particular, she worked with Vana del Panta, or Gaia, a 17-year-old girl, also from a modest family, who looked after the aspirants and young people of Catholic action. On July 23, 1949, through Gaia, Joe was able to attend a meeting of a group of people who were trying to live the gospel. She says, I never knew how to express what I understood at that moment. I only knew that with a very strong light, I kept on repeating to myself, I have understood God's logic. Now I know how God reasons. Now I know what the world is like. Now I know the meaning of suffering and death. Someone in the meeting had mentioned a sentence of Jesus. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, you did it to me. And it was clear for the first time that this least was also my mother. So I thought, when I get home, if she would ask me to do something, I have to say yes. Until then, I had said very few yeses. From that day on, every morning was a new discovery. We read the gospel and immediately tried to live it with wonderful results. That was the beginning of, div of a divine adventure with a small group of the newly formed community of the movement in Florence. This is how Jo described her first meeting with the Focolari Movement's founder, Chiara Lubic. At the beginning of November 1949, we heard that Chiara was in transit at the train station in Florence and would be stopping for a few hours to meet our small community. However, Chiara herself did not speak. She let Focal read to us an article that she had just written when she returned to Rome from the Dolomite Mountains. It was a time when, after the Paradise of Unity arrived at with her companions, she found herself again in the cold, the solitude, indifference, and boredom of Rome. It was while listening to this writing, The Resurrection of Rome, that I felt the full power of Chiara's ideal for the first time. And in my heart, I found her passion 
for the unity of all people. Fascinated by the light and the revolutionary effect of the gospel in her life, Jo, at the age of 18, made a choice to give her life totally to God in the same way Chiara had done, a way of consecration in the midst of the world. This is how she narrated that special event. What Chiara was saying was so full of light, and at a certain point, that light blinded me. I had to take a step, a new choice, and I didn't know where to start. I felt that by now, my life was connected to all the others. I wouldn't have been able to think of a future without them. I didn't know what kind of future, but I did know that I wanted to be a focolarina. Nevertheless, this fascination was also mingled with moments of uncertainty. But her heart was already conquered by the one she had discovered as the all of her life. She continues, I was sure I was a focolarina, and I wouldn't have wanted to be anything else. But I didn't have the courage to take the step. Not because of what I had to leave behind, as I had already given practically everything, nor because of what I would lose. So convinced was I that I had found the most beautiful thing. And so, I was afraid because I knew that it would be an affair only between me and God. And I felt so small in front of him who was so great. Life went on and Joe's life now totally given to God and for the ideals she had embraced, turned into a great divine adventure intertwined with moments of great joy, of many discoveries, of evangelical life, and at times also of melancholy, to which only a sincere yes to Jesus crucified and forsaken gave meaning and light. To give oneself to God also means being ready to leave everything, and go to the whole world. In the early 1960s, Joe truly left everything and flew to the USA with two other Focolarini to open the first North American Focolare Center in New York. The life of unity spread in North America among countless people of diverse races, social status, and even those who had different cultural and religious convictions. In August 1965, Joe was in Ala Distura, Piedmont, Italy, for a meeting. Seeing her, Chiara said, Joe, do you know that you are no longer going back to America? You are now going to the Philippines. And Joe said, I'm happy, Chiara. Joe wrote, then I went home to look for an atlas to see where the Philippines was, which I confused a bit with the Mariana Islands and the Caroline Islands. As I wanted to leave for the Philippines, Chiara thought of sending me, meanwhile, with other focolarinas, to the Canary Islands to collaborate with Father Peyton, founder of the Family Rosary Crusade, for the preparation and holding of a big event. I didn't know God wanted to give me so many graces during those three and a half months. It seemed to me that God wanted to reassure me, to give me courage, and tell me that he would support me in the Asian adventure. On February 15, 1966, came the departure for the Philippines. Chiara said to me, Remember, Joe, the ideal is Jesus forsaken. And with this as Chiara's viaticum, or food for the journey, we left. Joe, with two young Brazilian focolarinas and two Italian focolarinos, Silvio Deneo and Chenja, or Guido Mirti. To make the most out of the multi-city flight ticket, they set off to meet people at each stopover. Jory counted, I felt 
that the two billion people in Asia should get to know the ideal at once. This was a kind of driving force in me. I couldn't stay a minute without moving. So they had a layover in Karachi in Pakistan, Mumbai in India, Yangon in Myanmar, Bangkok in Thailand, and finally Manila, where, due to a misunderstood telegram message, there was no one to welcome them at the airport. It is impossible to describe all the experiences, impressions, and anecdotes that followed in meetings, in relationships, from which, since the very first days, all the vocations of the work of Mary were born in an almost exceptional adherence to the charism, thanks also to the work of Father Joseph Tashner, SVD, who had sown the ideal of unity in communities all over the Philippines. Joe would say, Our Lady did everything. Here are just a few excerpts from Joe's letters to Chiara during those early years in Asia. Mary had loved me so much in those last days spent in Rome, and to me, it seemed that she was telling me that there was only one thing that I came to do here in Asia, to bring her. Do you remember that my word of life is, son, here is your mother? To bring her, reliving her. From Karachi, February 19th, 1965. Then, I am in Hong Kong. I arrived here with a desire to work a lot, to do a lot. And as soon as I set foot in Hong Kong, I realized that the only thing I could do was to lose every plan, every aspiration in Jesus forsaken. Written from Hong Kong, February 11th, 1973. Another one. At this time, I feel in my heart as I never did before, the passion for ut omnes, or that all may be one. And I try to communicate it to everyone. Written from Tagaytay, May 15th, 1980. Here are some testimonies of people who have been close to Joe. Gabri. One of Joe's companions in the Focolare Center in Parma, Italy. Dearest Joe, you have reached the goal without our expecting it, but you continue to love us with your simple, great love ever since you met the ideal in Florence among the pioneers there. The trail of light you leave behind, your itinerary from Florence to the USA to Asia, we will miss you. Shinti a focolarino in Mariapolis Peace in Tagaytay. It was a great gift for me to be able to work closely with Joe in the Philippines for 10 years. From the moment I arrived, I found in her an elder sister of remarkable intelligence, together with a sense of humor, for she knew how to listen and grasp clearly what was happening in the movement and in Philippine society in those years. I was always struck by her simplicity and radicality in living the ideal, her sense of responsibility, and how she made herself one with the various cultures of Asia and Oceania. Above all, I was struck by her lively and constant unity with Chiara and her love for every development of the work of Mary in the world, especially in Asia. Esther, a volunteer from the USA. I'm sure all of us have been reflecting, reminiscing, and conversing with Jo, even now that she has left, as we've done countless times when we were Jen or Focolari youth. All my thoughts, feelings, and memories have been distilled into a sense of unfathomable gratitude for her love, which I have experienced in such a personal way. I think that this love must truly reflect Mary's love. Jesus' love, God's love. One of Joe's companions in Rome, Italy, told us, 
One day at sunset, I was beside her. And while looking at the sky, she compared it to her own life, saying that the day was over and that all that remained now was to make a beautiful sunset. Jo remains with us after being blessed with her beautiful sunset, her passing. She leaves a trail of light for us to follow in life, leading us towards the sun, our destiny, our God of love. By Romeo Vital and Jose Aranas.